This is a book called President Donald J. Trump, The Son of Man, The Christ. Now, somebody sent me a picture of this book at a Trump rally a while back. Apparently, the guy who wrote it, Helgard Muller, has been going to Trump rallies, passing a copy of his book out to everybody. Let me give you an idea of the premise of the argument here. In the Bible, there are two messianic roles. There's a son of God and the son of man. The son of God was obviously fulfilled by Jesus. He came to earth, died for your sins, and all of that other good stuff, right? The son of man is referred to in the Bible in a number of Old Testament books, the book of Daniel, I think, mentions the Son of Man, the book of Ezekiel, and some others. The Son of Man is supposed to be like a cosmic judge who comes along at the end, sparks Armageddon into existence, and judges all of the good people and the bad people, basically. The assumption is that Jesus is going to come back a second time, take control of the Israeli political system. That's why Israel needs to exist as a nation before Jesus could come back, because that's one of the requirements for the Son of Man, for somebody to be the Son of Man, and then spark Armageddon into place. That's the belief among standard Christianity. This guy's argument, Helgard Muller, is that America is the new Israel, that the Founding Fathers were descendants of the original Jews that came up through the Caucasus Mountains or whatever else. Complete nonsense, just totally made up. And that Trump took control of the political system in New Israel, which made him the son of man. So that is their argument for Trump being the second coming of Jesus. That's what this book is all about, so I wanted to give it a read. We've been reading it already. If you haven't seen the previous parts, don't sweat it. You don't have to see the others to understand what's happening in the current chapter. Do not believe literally a single fact, a single statistic, a single word out of this guy's mouth. Just based on what I've already read, even the most basic facts like the names of political parties or the translation of words are wrong. He lies about them constantly. So before you believe a single thing out of this book, make sure you fact check it. And one more thing before we actually get into the book, some of it can be pretty graphic. The guy is a rabid racist, does not like the black community, grew up in South Africa during the period of segregation called apartheid, and is very obviously an extremely hateful person. So just be aware of that before walking into the book. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is chapter 22 of the book, President Donald J. Trump, the Son of Man, the Christ. The title of this chapter is President Donald John Trump and the Swamp. So in the previous few chapters, he was giving us his reasons for why he thinks that Donald Trump is the Messiah. Absolutely unhinged stuff. Let's read this one and see what he has to say for himself. There are a lot of similarities between Jesus and Mr. Donald J. Trump when comparing the story of Jesus to President Donald J. Trump. Nobody accused him of being able to uh, write very well, I guess, or edit, right? You will find it remarkable in a lot of ways when you see these comparisons. Jerusalem was the capital of the ancient world, whereas Washington, D.C. is an important world's political capital. It is one of the most visited cities in the United States. One of the most. I guess the other one would be New York City, right? <laughs> on October 17th, 2016, during a speech on ethics reform, Donald Trump announced, it is time to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. Donald Trump gave a speech on ethics reform? He says this as if this is something Trump actually cared about. Trump made the swamp worse when he was in power. A day later, he repeated the phrase in a tweet, adding the hashtag drain the swamp for good measure. It was late in the campaign for a new slogan, but soon audiences were chanting it. Donald Trump to describe his plan to fix problems in the federal government. What? Th that's just one singular sentence. Donald Trump to describe his plan to fix problems in the federal government. End sentence. Okay. In three weeks before the 2016 election, Donald Trump tweeted drain the swamp 79 times, usually as a hashtag and he tweeted the word swamp another 75 times in the four years following that election. Okay. Jesus was also against the swamp. Oh, was he? This is news to me. Okay. The same way as President Donald Trump is today. The same swamp in Jerusalem wanted to kill Jesus several times, according to Matthew 2, because Jesus was against their self-righteous politics. 
The story of Jesus, the Son of God, is still the same story today, only this time with Donald Trump as the other Christ, the Son of Man, for now who is for now who is against Washington, D.C. as the swamp. Okay, that sentence didn't really make sense, but all right. The best tweet which Jesus tweeted about Jerusalem, Washington, D.C., as the swamp was in Matthew 23 and Luke 13. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that. Wow, this chapter was a single page long. As for Jesus, who was against the swamp in Jerusalem, so is President Donald Trump against the swamp in Washington, D.C. As for Jerusalem, which was destroyed, so will Washington, D.C. be destroyed, according to Matthew 24. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, chapter 23. President Donald John Trump and the snake. This is less than a page. President Donald John Trump recited the song lyrics of The Snake at his rallies, bringing back a controversial staple of, of his 2016 campaign. The song, written by civil rights activist Oscar Brown Jr. in 1963, tells the story of a tender-hearted woman who rescues a half-frozen snake that later bites and kills her. I have no idea what song he's talking about here. The president has used the lyrics to warn against what he says are the dangers of lax immigration policy, according to PBS. But Trump's use of the song in that context has been heavily criticized. Maybe that's because, I mean, I, I'm just shooting from the hip here. I have no idea what this song's about or who Oscar Brown Jr. is or when Trump sang it or any of that. So totally shooting from the hip, but just taking what he said at face value. Maybe he was criticized for that because the song was written by a civil rights activist and he was using it to attack a minority group. That would be my guess, but I don't know. Jesus, on the other hand, also used the term snake as well in many of his campaigns throughout the land of Israel back in his days, according to Matthew 12 and Matthew 23. Back in his days, plural, okay. John the Baptist and Jesus, uh, by the way, he believes John the Baptist is Donald Trump and vice versa. I don't know if he thinks it's like reincarnation or what. I have no idea, but yeah, he thinks they're the same. John the Baptist and Jesus were also fiercely criticized in the same manner as President Donald J. Trump was for using the term the snake to criticize his opponents. The parallels between these two Christs are gigantic. Wow, that's bizarre. And again, the end of a chapter. These chapters are like 9, 10, 12 pages long. I think one of them is even like 20 pages long at one point, and I had to split it in half. And now they're like less than a page long each. We're on chapter 24 now. This one is like four pages long. Wow, okay. Chapter 24, President Donald John Trump and the Demons. Remember how Jesus, the Son of God, cast out the demons? Millions of Americans believe Trump is fighting literal demons. The U.S. president's evangelical followers have portrayed him as America's deliverance, a flawed man recently converted to the cause around the time of his presidential campaign. The Bible says that we will see the Trump of God in end times. Alex Jones is a radio host who thinks Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, oh, here we go, are literal demons from hell. Fox News' Janine Pirro referred to Democrats as demon rats. Yeah, stupid name she came up with. That's true. Have you seen some of the faces of these demons, or Democrats, when President Trump won the election on November 8, 2016 and became the 45th president of the United States? Horrific and filled with so much hate and anger toward him, his family, and his followers. Everybody knows that the word democracy is derived from Greek and means the rule of people. Oh, is this another, like, copy and paste from Wikipedia? This dude, no joke has copied and pasted straight from Wikipedia no less than twice. Once about Mark Zuckerberg and once about uh, the name Donald. What the origins of the name Donald were all about. I'd be willing to bet this is copy and paste, pl a.k.a. plagiarized. I'd be willing to bet he plagiarized this from Wikipedia all over again. Democracy, noun, 1570s, from Middle French, democrity. I, I don't speak French, I apologize. From medieval Latin, democratia. From Greek, democratia. Popular government. From demos, common people. Originally, district. See, demotic and kratos, rule and strength. See, crassy. Okay. Yeah, this is straight up 
copied straight from something. I don't know what. Though we can see some disturbing hints here that it is not so simple as it seems. It's not just generic people, but common people who come from a particular district. What? When we look further, we will find demotic. 1822 from Greek demotikos. Of or for the common people in common use. From demos, common people. Originally district. From pi, da, mo, division. From root to divide. See tide. Okay, let me just... Here's what he's doing. He's trying to convince you that democracy and demon have the same root word when they don't. Let's find out. You can just search etymology, demon. Let's just look up the etymology of the word demon here. From the Greek word daemon, Latin daemon, Old English demon, meaning evil spirit or deity or genius. Now the etymology of the word democracy from the Greek word demos and from the Greek word kratia, power or rule, the people and power or rule. They're two different words. They are not linked to each other at all. They are both Greek words. Yeah, they're, they're, their origins are both from Greek rather than Latin. Uh, Latin had a word for demon also that was very similar, daemon, but they are not the same. He desperately wants to make it out as though democracy has its roots in the word demon, and it's just made up. Well, I guess this is him saying that he doesn't like democracy then, right? Yeah, I'm going to skip to the bottom of the page because he's just going through more definitions apparently. Circa 1200, the word demon, from Latin daemon, or spirit, from Greek daemon, deity, divine power, lesser god, guiding spirit, tutelary deity, sometimes including souls of the dead, one's genius, lot, or fortune, from pi, yeah, I'm skipping down to the bottom here. What does all this mean? Democracy is a demonic rule which creates division between people, isn't it? No! He just defined, or he just gave us the etymology of the word demon, and etymology of the word democracy completely unlinked to each other. It's like the word genius and ingenuity. They sound similar. They are not from the same root word. They're not the same. Just because words sound similar does not mean they came from the same root words, okay? So he just gave us the, the origins of the words and did not establish a link between them, but is now assuming that link anyways. That's what this guy does. He's so full of it from beginning to end. What does all this mean? Democracy is a demonic rule which creates division between people, isn't it? That comes as no that comes as a no surprise conclusion, okay? Cratic means relating to a particular kind of government or rule. Is that even true? Don't believe a word out of these people's mouths, FYI. You got to look it all up yourself. Democrats are derived from demon rats and democracies derived from demons crazy. No. Where did he get any of this? Democracy is simply ruled by demons. The division aspect is them and their kind separated from all truth and righteousness and the divisions amongst themselves, e.g. chaos, a kingdom divided. No, it's completely made up. All of it. It's completely made up. And he says it with such confidence. Democrats, the ones who are on the left, whom the Son of Man, or President Donald Trump, will send them to eternal hell. Wow, dude. Holy sh**. This book is crazy. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, Democrats and liberals. Matthew 13, 41 and Matthew 25, 41. This is nuts, dude. This is absolutely nuts. Matt Damon, the Hollywood actor, is a supporter of the Democratic Party and has made several critical attacks against the Republican Party figures. Damons, D-A-I-M-O-N-S, which is the root word for the word demon. Damons are lesser divinities or spirits, often personifications of abstract concepts, beings of the same nature as both mortals and deities, similar to ghosts, chthonic heroes? Never heard that word before. Spirit guides, forces of nature, or the deities themselves. See Plato's Symposium. Chthonic. Concerning belonging to or inhabiting the underworld. A chthonic deity. Okay, I've never heard that before. I guess it is a word, though. According to Hesiod's myth, great and powerful figures were to be honored after death as a daemon, 
a daemon, D-A-I-M-O-N, is not so much a type of quasi-divine being, according to Burkert, but rather a non-personified peculiar mode of their activity. Why are we going through all of this bizarre, like, definitional stuff? Like, who cares? The root word of democrat or democracy is not demon. The New Testament is filled with Jesus who cast out the democrats or demons by the finger of God. According to Luke 11, God is a Republican, a far-right extremist, and believes in ethnic cleansing. Okay, this is news to me. I've got to look this one up. Holy shit, dude. This is nuts. Luke 11.20. Let's see what Luke 11.20 says that establishes that God is a Republican, a far-right extremist, and believes in ethnic cleansing. Okay, we got Luke 11.20 here. It looks like it's in red, so that means Jesus is speaking directly. Let's see what Jesus had to say here that convinces people that God is a far-right extremist who believes in ethnic cleansing. By the by, if you don't know that term, ethnic cleansing is basically genocide. Ethnic cleansing does not necessarily require killing people. You can move them out of your country entirely, and it would still be ethnic cleansing. But genocide is ethnic cleansing. So you're you're taking people out. You, the, the goal is to remove a minority group from an area, basically. That's what ethnic cleansing is. And it, it's synonymous with genocide and how evil it is, in my opinion. Okay, so let's see if Jesus endorses ethnic cleansing in, in verse 20 here. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Uh, okay, I'm not seeing the connection here. I, I don't even know what it's talking about. What does that have to do with anything at all? That is insane. Holy <laughs> shit, dude, that's insane. There are several scriptures that show God is a supremacist and apartheid activist, one who commits genocide, one who is against race mixing, etc. Read my book, The Five Gods of the Bible, to find out what is the finger of God and how God is a supremacist and apartheid activist, one who commits genocide, etc. Yeah, so if you're unfamiliar with apartheid, uh, this is something that we talked about at the very beginning of the book. Apartheid is probably most famous in South Africa. It was illegal for white people and black people to mix, for white people and black people to go to the same schools, to marry each other, to have children. You would be put in prison in some cases if you mixed with these people in the wrong ways. They even had something they called the pencil test. The pencil test was where if you put a pencil in your hair and it stays put, you're black. If the pencil falls out when you put it in your hair, you're white. That's how they went about determining if you were white or black when people couldn't tell, basically. The, it was so deeply evil. It is viewed as one of the most evil things in human history. Apartheid is. It's just as evil as slavery, for example. And a lot of Holocaust survivors, particularly Elie Wiesel, who got a Nobel Peace Prize, directly and openly condemned people who supported apartheid South Africa. It is a truly evil thing that happened in history. And guess who is actually in favor of apartheid? The guy who wrote this book. Seriously. He speaks highly of apartheid all through it, says he misses the days when apartheid existed. It's just disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Apartheid South Africa ended in 1993 when Nelson Mandela was appointed president, I believe, of South Africa, famously. They wrote a new constitution and everything. It, it's just evil. Just evil. President Donald J. Trump, who is the son of man, will stand on the right hand of God, and Trump will cast out the Democrats with the finger of God. The Hebrew scriptures and the Greek scriptures are written in a, are written in a cryptic code. There's absolutely no religion in the Bible, and there's no biblical proof of the, for that either. What? That doesn't make any sense at all. It is all a play between God and the Lord, Yahweh, with the humans and the Jews, and you, will, and you have all bought into it. Jesus rebuked, silenced, and cast out the Democrats, or the demons, who uttered his name, according to Matthew 8. And so will President Trump, as the Son of Man, do, do to the Democrats, or demons. This guy is just depraved. Holy sh**.
this is just insane. Okay, this next chapter is number 25, and it's titled President Donald John Trump and the Liberals. Democrat hypocrites are undermining COVID with do as I say, not as I do attitude. This reminds me what a true Republican Jesus really was, according to Matthew 23, when Jesus, the Son of God, said unto the lawyers, the scribes, and the Pharisees that they were hypocrites. These communist Democrats bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born. What? That sentence doesn't make sense. And lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers, according to Matthew 23. That sentence did not make any sense, but okay. Peter Schweizer talked about this in his book, Do As I Say, Not As I Do, Profiles in Liberal Hypocrisy, published by Doubleday. In his book, he concludes that there is a distinct difference between the public policies endorsed by liberals and the policies they actually adhere to in their private lives. The author chronicles what he believes to be a double standard among liberals such as Michael Moore, Ralph Nader. Ralph Nader was not a Democrat. He was a Green Party activist, right? Noam Chomsky, Barbara Streisand, and Senator Ted Kennedy. Noam Chomsky is not a Democrat either. He's just to the left of hunting the homeless for sport. Most of these people are, okay? When it comes to issues such as environmentalism, affirmative action, corporate America, and tax cuts for the wealthy, he talked about how charges of hypocrisy distort public debate and about the difference in how these charges are applied to liberals and conservatives and reported in the media. He questioned whether liberal leaders truly believe the values they espouse. So I, I don't know what he's talking about, but I'm assuming he's going to level this common accusation at these people. These people make over a million dollars a year, or they have over a million dollars, right? So he's going to claim if they are in favor of higher taxes for the rich, then they should be giving money to the government rather than complaining about people paying more taxes. They should actually be paying more taxes. First of all, that doesn't further the goal of changing the way that the system works. Second, can you even do that? Are you even allowed to pay more to the IRS than you need to? I don't think so. And third, they most definitely donate lots of money to charities. That would be the alternative. If you can't pay more in taxes, which, again, I don't think that's even possible to do, then you can donate that amount to charities. They definitely do that. So it's a completely unrealistic and unreasonable charge to claim hypocrisy over. But they look for, when I say they, I'm talking about like, far-right extremists, particularly the writer of this book that the guy mentioned. This guy looks for any opportunity he can to slander and twist things around and call Democrats demons. And the writer of this book, Donald Trump, the Messiah, the Christ, is looking for any reason to believe what he reads in books like this. Anyway, let's keep reading. As the nation tires of quarantines, boredom, and loneliness, the same politicians who find glee in slapping wrists and dooming small businesses regularly break the rules in letter and in spirit when they want to. Well, give us some examples. California Governor Gavin Newsom dined maskless and indoors with lobbyists at the Tony French Laundry Restaurant the same week he warned against Thanksgiving gatherings. That's true. That's fair enough. He did make a good point there. Gavin Newsom did dine indoors without a mask immediately after COVID started. But for one thing, he didn't know, nobody knew really, how serious COVID was about to be. And for another thing, it was right to set the policy. I don't care what Gavin Newsom does personally. I mean, if he's going to champion policy, then he should definitely reflect that in his personal life. I, I can agree with that. But championing policy in the first place is all I really need. Making sure that people are doing what's safest, doing what's best for everybody. I'm okay with that. That's, that's really what I care about. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot had her hair done and joined in a riotous Joe Biden victory celebration in violation of her own restrictions. I have no idea what he's talking about. The Chicago mayor was part of a riot? A victory celebration that was a riot, then had the gall to call her actions essential activities. 
I have no idea what he's going on about right now. I honestly completely lost here. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden were caught violating Washington, D.C.'s indoor mask mandate by walking through a high-end Georgetown restaurant without masks on Saturday, October 15, 2021. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. They were all tested before entering the area. So it was perfectly safe. They all took tests and they were all vaccinated. Now, for public perception's sake, maybe they should have worn masks, but it was perfectly safe, honestly. He's just looking for these weird little hypocrisies and completely ignoring the glaring hypocrisy from Jesus's party, apparently, the Republican Party. Liberal Party leader and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who has made management of the COVID-19 pandemic a major plank for the 2021 federal elections, was slammed by opposition leaders for holding a large indoor campaign event in a suburb of Toronto, which violated health and safety norms. Yeah, the word event and the word in are smashed together. There's no space between them. Campaign event in a suburb of Toronto, which violated health and safety norms. I have no idea what he's talking about. As if he even cares. Did this even happen? As if the guy cares what, you know, people to the left of hunting the homeless for sport are doing about COVID. He doesn't care. He's looking for weird little examples of hypocrisy. Slipshod Boris Johnson's rule-breaking shows the reckless hypocrisy of a prime minister incapable of leading by example. Boris Johnson is not on the left at all. He's on the far right. When people want to do the right thing and cry out for direction, he behaves as if there is one law for everybody else and another for him and his Downing Street cronies. It is dangerous because if he does what he wants, and we've seen photos of Johnson flouting mask-wearing rules in a hospital, on a train, and in a theater, he undermines public support for potentially life-saving measures, as if he even believes that these are life-saving measures, first of all. And as if Johnson is... On the left, he's not. He's a far-right nutcase. I mean, he's not as bad as some of the others, but he's on the right, for sure. Dictator Premier Daniel Andrews, I have no idea who Daniel Andrews is, has been fined $400 for breaching his own coronavirus rules by not wearing a mask two days in a row. Again, no idea who this is. Let's see. Oh, is it supposed to be Danielle Adams? I have no idea who this is. Who is he even talking about right now? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I try to look it up. I can't find anything about it. So I'm just lost. I'm sorry. The maskless Bidens were recorded leaving Fiola Mare or Fiola Mare while flanked by mass secret service agents. The two dined at the pricey Italian seafood restaurant on the Potomac River after attending a service at Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Georgetown. The Gaul. Again, Biden takes tests after test after test and is very careful about the people that he's around. He was perfectly safe. Should he have worn a mask for public perception? Probably. I don't really care that much. It's not a big deal. And this guy certainly doesn't care. He's just looking for a method of attacking him. Amid concerns over the emerging Delta coronavirus variant, a new video has emerged of former President Barack Obama dancing without a mask during his heavily criticized 60th birthday party on Martha's Vineyard. Is this even true? I don't know. The video was posted to Instagram by Erica Badu, a well-known songwriter, not well-known to me, who attended the event along with dozens of other celebrities. Badu has since removed the video from her account. Other partygoers removed photos they'd posted of Obama socializing with guests without a mask. Again, is any of this true? I don't know. He just keeps going and going like I care. None of this proves anything at all. Yeah, I've gone out without a mask. I went out without a mask earlier, though the guidance is to wear a mask. Sometimes I put my mask on halfway down the elevator when someone else is already in it. It happens sometimes. We can only do our best. That's all anybody is asking. He's just desperately trying to prove that the demon rats are hypocrites and that Republicans have never shown a lick of hypocrisy in their lives. Hang on, I'm skipping forward a little bit here. All these hypocrites are Democrats, and most of them are proud progressives. Proud posers are more like it. Video shows a Pennsylvania state representative referring to mask wearing as political theater as he discussed with Governor Tom Wolf whether to wear them for a press conference. Yeah, again, no idea if this is even true. Hypocrisy is by no means limited to the left side of the spectrum. You can even argue that violations in secret, until they get caught, are just simple human failing. 
but many of these politicians flaunted their rule-breaking in public only to cite some BS reason why it was okay. And that sanctimony, we'd argue, is a partic- uh, I'm sorry, is a peculi- is a peculiarity. Wait, I'm sorry, no. And that sanctimony, we'd argue, is a peculiar peculiarly wait, peculiarly peculiarly is a peculiarly progressive vice. These politicians are certain they not only know better than the little people, but that they have a moral right to dictate detailed choices to struggling business owners, desperate single moms, and everyone else facing dire dilemmas as they balance safety and keep life together. They do. They do. They're civil servants. They were elected by us to dictate choices like this for safety purposes. This is their job to make policy, to pass laws, to help keep us safe. They do have that right. This guy is ridiculous from top to bottom. Oh my God. We are seeing more civil disobedience like that bar protest in Staten Island precisely because Democrats are not practicing what they preach. No, that's not why. We're seeing civil disobedience because people on the right are nutcases that are obsessed with with the idea that there's some conspiracy that COVID was released by, like, an alien race to try to take out... It's all nonsense, beginning to end. And this is yet another perfect example of somebody spreading nonsense. It's that arrogance that leads you to make a mockery of a threat that has killed more than 1.5 million and then rub it in the faces of the most vulnerable. Again, he's, like, ascribing qualities to people... That is completely unjustified to ascribe. One of the biggest scolds of the coronavirus pandemic, Newsom attended a birthday party for a friend at Michelin-starred restaurant The French Laundry. As long as there were COVID tests involved, as long as everybody was super careful, I'm really okay with it. At that moment, he probably should have worn a mask because he was passing policy, trying to get people to be more careful. But it's really not that big of a deal. It's not like he was a vector for, like, you know, the virus from that point forward. He was only caught because someone took a picture of Newsom's table, after which the governor said, while our family followed the restaurant's health protocols and took safety precautions, we should have modeled better behavior and not joined the dinner. Yeah, he did. He followed the health protocols and everything. You are allowed to eat at a restaurant without a mask and then put the mask on when you leave. That's true. Jesus, the son of God, knew these liberal communists who are hypocrites, and so does President Donald J. Trump, the son of man. In reality, they're not after President Donald Trump, they're after you. President Trump is just in the way. This is a cute little piece of propaganda that was passed around QAnon circles in the form of a meme a while back. Yeah, here's the meme right here. In reality, they're not after me, they're after you, I'm just in the way. Uh, Again, this is just a piece of propaganda that's been spreading around pro-Trump circles for like ever. It's just part of that persecution complex, doing everything they can to make people think that they are being persecuted and that Donald Trump is this big hero or whatever. It's just nonsense, dude, honestly. Oh, my God, this book is crazy. Okay, so that's chapter 25. Next one is 26, President Donald John Trump and his Boeing. Let me know what you think about the previous few chapters. I think that's absolutely nuts. And let me know if you want to read more of this book. For the record, I think the next book we'll be reading is the and is the Tate Bible is the name of it. Andrew Tate's book. I can't imagine that's going to be glued to reality in any way. So, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments.